Hi, and welcome to this new presentation regarding differential scanning calorimetry. At the end of this new module, you will understand how is the DSC response related to how your DSC is operating internally. This is our contents outline. We will discuss some previous considerations before being able to understand which is the response of our DSC and then we will go directly to this response and finally we will relate it to the behavior internal of your differential scanning calorimeter. Concerning the previous knowledge, it is good to know some fundamentals of DSC as well as some chemistry and physics concepts. Let's start then with these previous considerations. What are these? So the first question is, what is our DSC really measuring? The response that we obtain is the relationship between the heat flux and the temperature. If we divide both parameters, what we are really obtaining is the heat capacity. So we are measuring variations in heat capacity. Then what we are really going to see are changes in exothermal transitions as well as endothermal transitions. If we set that our environment is the DSC as a device and our system is the sample, we will define the exothermal transitions uh, to those in which the system is releasing heat to the environment and the endothermal transitions are those in which the system is absorbing heat from the environment. Moving on the information in the y-axis, it is very important to know what is sign there because if it says endo, it's because in the positive axis is the endothermal transitions are going in this direction, but on the other way around, if we see exo, which means exothermal, means that those transitions that are in the positive axis are the exothermal. So be very, very, very careful. So let's start with the response of our DSC. We have chosen a thermoplastic polymer because uh, it's the one that uh, will give us more information. So first of all, we will uh, see which are the first order transitions, which are equilibrium transitions in which some latent heats are implied. For example, in the heat in the scan, we can see the cold crystallization and the melting. This is the cooling scan, so the experiment direction goes from higher temperatures to lower temperatures, and then we can see the crystallization. Regarding this increase in heat capacity, this is because it's a second order transition and does not imply latent heat in its changes, just only variations in the heat capacity. In that case, it's the glass transition, what we are seeing here. This is the summary of the transitions that we can see. So, let's start. How does our DSC work? So, we are going to start with the amorphous zone and the glass transition. So, at ambient temperature we have our polymer in the glassy state, which means that the movement of the chains is restricted. And we are increasing the heat capacity and we will obtain a solid polymer, of course, but in the rubbery state. That means that the chains have free movement. But what has happened in our DSC? That happens that the, the chains are absorbing energy from the DSC to increase their temperature and therefore acquire some mobility. And that will be seen in the response of our DSC as an increase of the heat capacity. Now, if we still keep on increasing the temperature, we are going to see the cold crystallization. So now we are in the rubbery state, this change with free movement, and we are going to see how the DSC works to obtain this 
uh, bell shape response. So imagine the DSC in the inside of your oven you have the sample holder and the reference holder and below you have some microheaters. Then we can see the temperature sensors and this is the DSC method that we are applying just a dynamic segment heating. So let's start then we are heating so we are increasing the temperature so we obtain the same increase in temperature in both sample and reference holders. So the thermogram has measured the difference in energy or in temperature between both sample and reference is going to obtain a very flat line. If we still increase the temperature we will see how the temperature is increasing in the same fashion in both sample and reference holders and so you, we will obtain the same flat shape in our thermogram. But if we still increase our temperature, the reference will increase our temp uh, the temperature, but by the principle of obtaining the same difference of temperature in both sample and reference, when these three chains acquire the desired temperature, they start reorganizing in increased in crystalline domains and that makes release some energy from the sample to the DSC. So this is an exothermal uh, transition. So we will obtain the same increase in temperature. So what happens is that the heater stops heating because there is no need for extra heat to increase the temperature of the polymer due to the exothermal cold crystallization. So what happens in the thermogram? That we obtain a decrease of our response. If we still increase our temperature, both temperatures in both uh, holder and both holders of sample and reference will be the same and then the difference that we will give in, in our response will be flat. So we still have some solid and we are going to see what happens when the polymer melts. So the state goes from solid to liquid. Do you remember this? So let's see what happens. We are increasing temperature. So the temperature in both sample reference is increasing in the same way. Then the difference in heat is null. We are still increasing and the temperature is going in the same fashion. But when we increase the temperature, it will be a moment in which during this melting, the polymer is absorbing energy, the energy given by the heater in order to melt. So the heater has to supply more energy aiming to have the same temperature in the holders of sample and reference. So the difference in temperature uh, is, is the same. So what we obtain is a, an increase in our DSC response. So the heater gives the energy that is being absorbed during this melting process to obtain a null difference in both holders. If we still increase the temperature, the response will be flat as we have seen with the cold crystallization. Once our polymer is melt, we have liquid, we can cool down our DSC. So the experiment will go from uh, high temperatures to low temperatures. So we are going to see what happens with the crystallization, in which we will pass from a uh, liquid in the molten state to a uh, solid in rubbery state. So now we are cooling down our holders so the temperature is decreasing in the same fashion and we will obtain a flat response in our DSC. If we keep on cooling down the same behavior will appear but when the crystallization appears the chains get a temperature in which the crystalline structures are rearranged releasing therefore energy. This is the exothermal reaction. So what will happen in our DSC response? 
that we are decreasing because the heater needs to cool with more intensity to give the temperature difference between sample and reference null. So the thermogram will decrease. If we keep on cooling down, the same behavior, so flat behavior, will appear. So remember what we have seen. So how is a DSC thermogram? Then we have distinguished between the first and second order transitions and finally we have related these transitions to how our DSC is working internally. So now it's time to evaluate and to understand your results relating to everything you have learned from this presentation. Thank you.